Hello students, welcome back to my channel, Easy Tips in Botany. So we are, now we are taking the first year syllabus, first year chapters. That is the <coughs> flower and where the uh, ovary is placed on the thalamus and what could be the expected questions in that. Then the, how we can divide the flower into in any plane. Otherwise, in one specific plane, can we divide the flower into two equal parts? That is the merosity. What we'll call that is as a merosity. So now, when we are saying the flower, what is meant by a flower? Flower is the modified part of the shoot. We can say flower as modified part of the shoot. That means on the stem, instead of the other parts to be arising from the nodal region, it will be, it is growing the flower. So, we can say flower as the modified part of the shoot from the nodal region. Instead of branches, leaves, the flowers will be originated. Okay. And these flowers are having the different parts on them. And that means the flower is having a small stalk as the pedicel and at the base of the pedicel that is in the angle of the stem we will see a small hair like structure called as bract and on the swollen part of the pedicel other parts of the flowers are going to be present. That is the, this are, these are the petals. These are petals. And the green hair like structure that is present below the petal is the sepal. Sepal is also called as the calyx. And petals are also called as corolla. And the central one is the gynecium. And this is the andricium. That is the male reproductive part. Like this, we can divide the flower parts. Okay. Now, these flowers are usually bisexual. And very rarely we will see the unisexual flowers of the plant body. So whenever we are saying the bisexual means both the male sex organs, that is the female sex organs, antrisium and gynecium need to be present. Need to be present. And in the, just on in the center of the, on the center of the thalamus, we will see the swollen part. That is the gynecium can be seen. And these flowers, which are having the a small stalk, when they are present, and the small stalk that is called as the pedicellated flower. Okay, if the pedicel is absent for the flower, then it is called as the sessile pedicellated flower. Pedicellated means when pedicel is present. When pedicel is absent. Then the flower is called as the sessile. Sessile means pedicel is absent. It's called as the sessile flower. Then the bracts, whenever are present for the flower, that it flower is called as the bracteate. And when the bracts are absent, then the flower is called as the e bracteate. Bracts are absent. Okay. And these <coughs> flowers are present in a systematic manner on the stem. Okay. And these flowers, when they can divide, 
into any plane R in one single plane. That is the, the flowers can be divided into uh, two equal parts or unequal parts in the specific radius that is called as the merosity. And in this, what we can say, the flowers are of three kinds. That means actinomorphic. Means when the flower can be divided in any plane, in vertical, horizontal, in the diagonal manner, and makes into two equal halves. That is the actinomorphic flower. Example for this is hibiscus datura. These are the examples of the actinomorphic flower. When the flower can be divided into two equal parts in single vertical plane, that is called as the zygomorphic. The next one is the zygomorphic. Zygomorphic means when the flower can be divided into two equal parts in one single vertical plane. That is called as the zygomorphic. In this, the best example is the P plants or PISM. P is the common name. PISM is the scientific name. That is the, in the Fabrice family, we we'll see this zygomorphic flowers. Next one is the asymmetric. That means when the flowers cannot be divided into two equal parts in any plane. That is called as the asymmetric. That means when the flower cannot be divided into two equal parts in any plane. That is the asymmetric flower. Example for this is the canna indica. Canna also we can do it. And the flowers usually based on the petal numbers in the flowers, we will give the number name for them. If the petals are of four in number, then the flower is a tetramerous flower. And when the flower is having the five petals, then it is the pentamerous flower. And when the flower is having three petals, that is trimerous flower. Okay. And when the flower is having the multiples of five in the petal number, that is also pentamerous type. And uh, Based on the position of ovary on the thalamus, the flowers are again divided into three types. Based on the position of ovary on thalamus. Again, the flowers are of three types. The first one is the hypogynous flower. Hypogynous flower means when the ovary is present on the thalamus and the thalamus is having somewhat a curved tip on the thalamus when ovary is present in the center and other floral parts are present just below the ovary. And that type of flower is called as the hypogynous flower. And in this, what we can say, when the ovary is above the thalamus and all other floral parts are attached on the thalamus, at the base of the ovary, then that is called as the hypogynous flower, superior ovary. In this, what is the position of the ovary? This is superior in nature. In this one, 
the best examples for the hypogynous flower is the hibiscus, the tura, that is the Solanaceae family members, and the mustard also comes under this. Okay, and uh, whenever we are saying the uh, hibiscus, then along with that, brinjal will come. So, four examples. Okay. So the first example here, it is the mustard, hibiscus, that means chena rose, and the uh, brinjal variety, that is the solanum jubal, solanum melangida, that is the brinjal scientific name. Then it will be having the, um, the tura, that also belongs to the solanaceae family member. So in this, the ovary is superior, and below that, all other floral parts are present on the thalamus. Next one is the perigynous flower. Perigynous flower. Perigynous flower means where the ovary is present on the center of the thalamus and The thalamus will be having a small groove like structure. And in this group, the ovary is present. Okay. And other floral parts are present on the lobes of the thalamus. Okay, this is the um, below this surface. This is the complete flower of the perigynous. That means when the ovary, the thalamus is having a small groove in the center, and um, in that groove, the ovary is a present, making the one fourth of the ovary is uh, inside the thalamus, and the rest of the part of the gynecium is above the thalamus. And other floral parts are arising on the lobes of the thalamus that is called as the perigynous inflorescence. In this perigynous flower, the examples are the plum, rose, pea plants, those comes under the perigynous inflorescence. Okay. Plum, rose, plum, rose, and the Pea plants and the peach variety in the plant body. Like any one you can use in the examples. Okay. So they will ask like anything with the examples in the weekend exams. So in the perigynous, one fourth of the ovary is under in the thalamus and three fourth will be above to that. And the last one is the epigynous flowers. Epigynous flowers means when the ovary is present in the groove of the thalamus. And only the style and stigma are above the thalamus. And the other floral parts, that is the andrisium, calyx, and corolla, are present on the lobes. That is called as the inferior ovary, completely inferior ovary. And this is the completely inferior ovary. Okay. And in this, the thalamus is having a big groove where the complete ovary is present inside the thalamus, leaving the style and the stigmatic lobes above the thalamus. Then that type of ovary is called as the inferior ovary and the flower is called as the epigynous flower. 
Okay, now comes with the, the when the flower is having the uh, in the inferior ovary that is the epigynous ovary. The example is the ray florets of sunflower. And tridax. Anything, any one example they can ask us. So we prepare with this. And now, when we are coming with the, the another concept that is the arrangement of petals and sepals in the bud condition of a flower is called as the estivation. So this type of estivation that means that whenever we are seeing the parts of the flower, it will be having the Calyx, corolla, and rishim in the condition. And in this, when the calyx are calyx, that means the sepals may be present united, that is joined with one another. joined with other petals, other sepals, that is called as the gamosepalus. When the sepals are fused to form an involucre, okay, and the crown-like structure at the base of the flower is called as the gamosepalus condition for the flower. When the petals are free, Petals are free. Okay. Then that is called as the polysepalus. Polysepalus. Okay. And the <coughs> next one is the corolla. When the petals, corolla means petals of a flower, what we know. Okay. In this one, what they are saying in the corolla, the petals may be fused or free. If they are fused, that is called as the gamosepal, gamopetalus. Gamopetalus. And if the petals are free, that is the polypetalus. Okay. Gamopetalus, polypetalus. And these, and in some cases, the stamens are attached to the Carola, otherwise the usually corolla. When the filaments of the andrisium are fused with the calyx, with the corolla of the flower, that means with the petal base of the flower, then that is called as the epipetalous stamens. Epipetalous stamens. Okay? And in this when we know all these things, now we have to move to the next one. That is, arrangement of uh, petals or sepals in the bud condition of a flower is known as estivation. Estivation. In this estivation, what we can say when the, uh, again, uh, estivation means when the petals are sepal arrangement with which have been seen in the bud condition of a flower is called as the estivation. Again, this estivation is of four types. The first one is the valvate estivation. Valvate estivation means when the petals or sepals of a flower are present nearer to one another are fused with one another. That is called as the valvate estivation. When the petals are nearer to one another, ends of the petals, otherwise, when they are fused, fused condition, we will represent like this. When these are fused, that is called as the valvate estivation. And in this, these are looking like the loops.
Okay, this is the and in this see how many petals one, two, three, four, five, five member is constant. But that is the valvate estivation. And the next one is the twisted type of estivation. In the twisted type of estivation, what it will be doing? In twisted type of estivation, the petals are sepals are twisted at the base and three at the top so that the ends of the petals are overlapping on one another. That is nothing but the twisted type of estimation. In this, one petal, this is in, this end is out. Then this petal, this end is in, this end is out. Then we will see like this. This end is in, this end is out. Okay, one, two, three, no, four, five, five petals. And this is out, this should be in now. This is out means this should be in. This is, this should be out. Like this. In and out, in and out condition of the petal ends can be seen. That is called as the twisted type of estivation. In this twisted type of estivation, the best example is the Corolla of hibiscus. Okay, now comes the imbricate type of estivation. In the imbricate type of estivation, what we will see the petal ends are not arranged, petals are not arranged in a systematic manner. That is called as the imbricate type of estivation. In this one petal is completely out and alternate to this another petal is completely in and the rest of the petals will be in and out condition. This is in and out. One is end is in, second end is out. And here also, this should be out and this should be in. When this is in, then this should be out and this should be in. Like this. So in this, arrangement of petals is not in a specific manner where we will see one petal is completely outside. Alternate to this, another opposite to this, whatever the petal that is present is having the completely in that is all the two ends are present inside and the other three petals are arranged in the in and out condition that is called as the imbricate type of estuation example casia okay now comes with the vexillary type of estuation vexillary type of estuation this is also called as the Papillonaceous corolla. And this can be seen only in the Fabaceae family, where the five petals are present for the flower. In that one will be the very big standard petal, and the other petals are the on the lateral sides to that, two equal sized petals are present, called as the wing petals. And below that, it will be having the two small sized petals called as the keel petals. Okay, this type of estivation is helping out for the plants, flowers to go with the cross pollination. That is the main aspect of this. And this, the standard petal is present posterior to the flower, and the other floral parts are present facing towards the mother axis, that is, anterior side of the flower. This is the vexillary type of estivation, otherwise the papillonaceous estivation, where we will see this only in the Fabaceae family members. And 
uh, with this we will uh, end up today's class and we will see the uh, <clears throat> another topic in the another class that is in another video till that stay tuned to my channel this is a tips in botany right thank you